Welcome to the Virtual Air New Zealand uh, Flight 1 ATR FMC programming tutorial. Um, this tutorial has assumed that you have set up your configuration manager um, and that you have got the aircraft parked at the gate, that you have uh, power on to the aircraft. Now this is assuming that you are either running on external power or on hotel mode. For the purposes of this tutorial we're actually going to be uh, operating in uh, from external power um, so we don't have to worry about the noise from the hotel mode generators. Uh, the first thing to note is that the, is that the um, FMC panel is accessed by shift 3 which brings up um, automatically the IDENT page. Um, one of the first things to note about the IDENT page is that it will tell you what the age of your navigation data is and when it is expired. Um, this year I purchased the ERIC 813 um, data which expires in January 2009. Because I'm cheap I only buy it every six months but for New Zealand this is more than adequate. From this screen press the right select key 6 uh, button which will give you your position reference um, and you just check that that is within uh, what you expected of your uh, position. If you go to Shift Z, uh, you will see that uh, that is the same coordinate. Uh, from here, you want to move on to the route page. Um, for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to undertake a flight from Auckland to um, Palmerston North. So the first thing you do is enter your origin and uh, don't worry about the runway at this stage and then your destination which uh, Palmerston is NZPM. So you pop that in there. Now what you see on this first page is that this says page 1 of 2. So if you go to the next page um, this is where you start entering the route. Um, the first waypoint uh, that we're going to enter for this flight is AA, which is the VOR uh, beacon uh, at Auckland Airport. And if we press that onto 2, we then get a selection that we that want to have a look at after that. So excuse the screen freezes. Um, so we selected the Auckland VOR at that point. Now after that we want to take route um, H211 from AA. Uh, and um, we're just going to pause at this stage. Now it's noted that um, route H211 goes all the way from Auckland to Napier but at the Hamilton VOR we want to break off that route and uh, follow the H325 route to Palmerston North. So we're going flying from the airport to Auckland VOR then along H211 until we reach the Hamilton VOR. You can see that we've got the two choices here, Hamilton NDB and Hamilton VOR. So if we select the Hamilton VOR, that will insert that into there. So the next leg of the route is H325 and that will go all the way to Palmerston VOR. Now it is possible not to put the Palmerston VOR on at this stage and then you'll just follow H325 directly to the end uh, of that route uh, and it can cause some confusion. So it's recommended to put the VOR in at that stage. So that's the route that has been entered in uh, to completion. Now the thing to look at now is you'll see the logical progression across here which is the route, the legs, the departure and arrival page. So if we go to the legs page you can then scroll through, uh, pressing next, and you'll see that H211 flies directly to the Hamilton VOR, then passes through the following waypoints until it reaches the Palmerston VOR. Um, the right side here is where you can add altitude restrictions, which are advisories if you so require. Um, so we've just checked that that's all added up. So we can go to the departure and arrival index page and um, 
the arrival at Palmerston, we won't know until we are airborne, so that won't be looked at at this stage. If we look at the departure from Auckland, um, you can see the available runways. Um, you will note that the normal runways for use uh, at Auckland Airport are 5 right and 2 3 left. Um, so those are always available there. Um, at this stage, you would be, we'll say, entering 2 3 left. You then have the standard instrument departures available. I would recommend not entering this at this stage um, because that can have some um, impacts on the way that aircraft flies the route. So I would just select 2 3 left and then be prepared to hand fly the departure that is allocated. So once you've selected the runway, you'll see the route came up here again. If we select that, we then have the ability that we're going from, we can see that we're going from 2 3 left directly to the Auckland VOR, um, and we can activate that flight plan. And this green button comes up to say that there has been changes made to the flight plan, and we need to execute those changes. We'll see now that the performance initialization key has come up, and if we press that, that takes us to the following page. Now one of the tricks with the Flight 1 ATR is that you don't have to remember um, the gross weight fuel and zero fuel weight. Um, if you select the button beside it, it will automatically enter the weights that are allocated to the configuration file for this plane. Similarly, if you enter the zero, click the zero fuel weight button, it will calculate that it has the five uh, tons, which is a full load, um, which it shouldn't have, uh, calculated here. Um, transition altitude in New Zealand is uh, one one thousand feet, which is entered there. And for the flight, because we're heading south, um, we'll elect a cruising altitude of 22,000 feet. You'll see that upon entering the cruising altitude that this green button has been selected again and that we wish to press execute. At this stage it is wise to review the legs page um, and we can see look for discontinuities in the data uh, and there are none at this stage. As an example, um, if we went back to the departures and arrivals and did a departure with a, um, so that's a West Point departure and transitioned through the beacon and executed that change. If we went back to the legs page, you'll see that there's now a route discontinuity, is that you fly from the runway, long runway heading to the beacon and then it doesn't know how to get back to the Auckland VOR. The way to clear a dis route discontinuity is you s select the line below the discontinuity and then enter it into the line above. And you'll see that that has modified the route and that route change won't become effective until you execute it again. So that's the flight plan that has been entered. If you look at the VNAV page, um, it's the same as the performance initialization. Um, you'll need to add uh, a, a reserve figure. Uh, it's reasonably irrelevant what's entered there, um, but you should be aware that that is uh, reasonably important for fuel consumption warnings. If you look at the next page of this, um, it has calculated where the top of descent from flight level 220 is. It's 223.8 nautical miles away. Um, with these numbers entered onto this page you uh, know that you have successfully entered your data for the um, Flight 1 ATR FMC. So that ends the tutorial for programming the Flight 1 uh, flight management computer. Uh, the next tutorial, tutorial will be the taking off and flying with the flight management computer.